Varmt välkomna till Studio Aiko Live. Idag har jag Kenny Stamatopoulos vid min sida här i studion. Welcome to the studio, Kenny. Thank you for having me. Uh, just to start with, how are you? I'm good. Yeah? I'm good. I'm good. How's, uh, how's life as a goalkeeper coach at Aiko? Uh, absolutely, I love it. I love working with the keepers. Um, I have a great bunch of guys that I'm working with, you know, Buddha and Christopher. Uh, I absolutely love love what I do. Mm. We have some kind of echo here, so we hear ourselves. Maybe our uh, staff outside can can fix that. Yeah. But um, so we're we are here today to um, not to talk about the season, not to talk about the upcoming game against uh, Sirius. We're here to talk about Ivan Trina, because yes. uh, on the coming Tuesday, May second, uh, ten years will have passed since we lost Ivan. Um, how often do you think of uh, Ivan today? Well, there's just um, certain scenarios, something that comes up in life, you know, uh, if I, if something happens and I, I did it with Yvonne or um, a situation that, that we, we, yeah, with me and Yvonne that, that we experience, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it comes in, it doesn't happen every day, but uh, there's a lot of times where, where um, memories pass through my mind mm -hmm. and, yeah. How, clo how close were, were you? Like being two keepers. You know, it's special because when you're a goalkeeper, um, your, your your colleagues, you know, you guys are you're fighting for a position. So it's I don't know if it's rare. I would say it's quite rare to be quite close to someone that's you're competing with. Mm. And with Ivan, it was the opposite. We were competing, or I thought I was, anyways. There was no competition. <laughs> no, there was no competition. <laughs> but I, I felt that, anyways, at the time. But we were. Uh, we had a lot of things in common, you know, um, him being played in Greece, me being Greek, um, him being Croatian, and we have the same kind of mentality, um, and we have a lot of the same interests, so we got along quite well uh, yeah. off the pitch as well, so we, we were very, very, we were close at the time, yeah. How would you describe him as a, as a goalkeeper? Oof. Um, he had this uh, special ability of being explosive which is very rare for a keeper at his size you know he was 195 105 kilos mm. so normally you know you wouldn't think he would be as, as explosive as he is or was and um, yeah his ability to to read the game he was just his presence you know as, as a as a mountain on the pitch um, and uh, he, he he, he, had, he had a big personality on the pitch, and as a goalkeeper, he, he, was, he was big. He was big. Mm. You knew straight away that it was going to be tough competition. Yeah, when I saw him the first training, I said, oh, my <laughs> what is this in front of me right now? I said, oh. But I, again, I had the mindset back then that, you know, I'm still good, I'm going to compete, and I guess <laughs> how foolish I was. Yeah. But at the same time, I guess that's what got me to where... I played yeah. and you know believing that I was something mm -hmm. so um, yeah when I first saw him I thought yeah I'm in trouble here I have a lot of hard work to to put in front of me to get to, to, to beat this guy mm. so if we move back to to May 2nd 2013 uh, the, the day that he passed mm -hmm. um, can you just take us back to uh, how did you receive the news and, and can you describe that, um, that moment I got a phone call uh, six in the morning from Kadi Kadi. At the time, okay. they were living at the in the same building. He called me and said, "Ivan's not getting up, or Ivan's dead." Or it was just straight up. I was like, again, it was like six in the morning, six thirty. I hung up the phone. I just, leave me alone. Because Kadi Kadi does that. I want you know, not that he does jokes, but he used to mm -hmm. call me early in the morning and stuff like that. I just so you thought he was kidding. I did. I did. I thought like. Well, he's just, whatever. Mm, so it's a, it a weird joke. It was, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you know, when you're half asleep, and um, I didn't think too much of it, no. and I hung up. And I think he called me again, to be honest, and I maybe screened him or something. Mm. But then when I got to Kalberg, more cars, and then when I opened the door, uh, it was just like a punch in the face, right in the gut. Ivan's dead, mm. and. Um, yeah, it was um, it was a very very hard thing to understand at the time. It was, mm. yeah, but um, that's how I got the news. How was your reaction? Were you like 
more, more mostly sad or shocked or how how would you describe your okay number one obviously as, shocked yeah definitely yeah. definitely shocked but you know fortunately for me up until you know 10 years ago i've never experienced death people with death and close family members or anything i haven't that, that was new to me mm. so it hit me extremely hard at the when when the phase came into he is really gone mm. where you know you kind of think I, I don't know why you always get this thought of no there's something not right here it's it can't be but um yeah it was just um i guess like a dark hole in, yeah. in, in my time there it was you know at the same time now looking back at it um I think my body or my brain went into like autopilot so it kind of like shut down so I can't really recall everything no. it's like I kind of forgot that just I guess my brain worked that way to I guess to protect me or yeah. I don't know I really don't know because it just I don't know how I got through it I really don't know I really no. so yeah it was tough very very tough how would you describe the how, how uh, like the following days of Cold Barry? Tough, very very tough. I I just know, um, yeah. It, it's it's hard. To, it was like I was a zombie. Mm. I was just getting by, and you know, obviously this is was on my mind all the time, and I'm assuming all my teammates and everyone. But it was, if anything. I, I had a hard time dealing with going... So when Ivan passed away and I got to Kalberg and everyone said he was dead and stuff like that, I, I don't know why, I got in my car and I drove to the house, to the apartment. And that, I think, traumatized me. I don't think I'll ever get past that part where I walked in and Senka was in, in pieces and the, 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 the twins were crying and screaming for dad. And the, Yeah, that was definitely the hardest. And, Probably that traumatized me the most. Were you his closest friend in the team? Or? I'd probably say so, yeah. yeah. Well, unfortunately, we can't ask him, but I'd yeah. probably say so, yeah. I think um, we were pretty close, and especially when he had the kids, mm. when Senka uh, got along with Maria, my wife, and, and Maria, she had, we had our kids too, so they can relate, so I, I think so. How did the club react? How much support did you, as, as a player and the other players, Oh, yeah. It must be so uh, difficult to, to prepare for something like that, yeah. or be, be ready for, for something like that. No, I think Bjorn and Alm and everyone in the club itself did as much as possible. They had psychologists and mm. all kinds of people there to support us. And, um, you know, it, and, it, and, um, in the big picture, I think it's, it was a little bit easier to, to overcome because it wasn't just me grieving. It was everybody grieving and there was a lot of support from at the my, at that time I was really close with Celso Borges, uh, Charlie Mian mm. and um, the, the, you know I think one helped the other and yeah it was um, I think the the people around um, really mm. we grieved and helped each other a lot. How have you processed the grief during the years that passed after? Um, it took time it took a lot of time it took um, Luckily, I, I had my kids, which I could focus a lot on my kids, kind of, not forget, but kind of push the problem to the side and put your, my, my mind on other things, mm -hmm. which helped a lot. Um, luckily, I had uh, my wife that helped me out, Maria helped me out a lot. Um, and like I said, with Celso and uh, Charlie. Um, but I don't know, I, I guess time, time does heal, mm -hmm. but... I don't know, it always lingers in the back, I guess, in your head somehow. So, um, I, I, I don't know how you overcome this, you know, it's, it's, it's always there, but you just learn or cope to, to move on. Yeah. Because he, he passed away on a Thursday, and uh, the next game coming up for Eiko was Monday against uh, Gothenburg. Um, how were you being able to prepare uh, for that game? Again, I, uh, this is, I'm, I look at it like as you or everyone else. Mm. Um, I put it outside the bubble where I think about it. I'm like, I don't even know how I can cope with it. If this were to happen to me today, there's no way I could cope with it. No. So I don't know how, you know, maybe 
the only thing I can think of is that physically I was there, but mentally I was elsewhere. There's yeah. like a, it's sad to say I went into a game not mentally prepared for this. Like I, uh, I, uh, I didn't really care about the game. Um, I didn't care about the result. I didn't care about Which anything. I think everyone can understand. Yeah, but uh, again, I, I don't know how no. I got myself to play this game. And is it special for all players, but especially for you, since you knew, knew him so well, and and you were supposed to be the goalkeeper after he left? Yeah, and you know, and in reality, I you know, I'd have been back up that game. I wouldn't be playing that game, and mm. it's. Um, I don't know, yeah. just thrown in the deep end and again, you just roll with the punches, but at the same time, I, can, I guess I, I can only tell you that I was lucky enough to have support around me, my wife and, uh, and the, my teammates to, to push me forward. Yeah. So I, don't, I don't really don't have an answer. No, I understand that. <laughs> but do you remember anything from the game? Any pieces from playing the I don't, game? I can't get, I, unfortunately right now, I, like I said, I think my, my brain works in a way where it kind of shut down. Mm. So I can't give you the feeling of how I felt during the game. No. Um, but I'm pretty sure I can tell you that my mind wasn't on the game itself. So, Because mm. you were able to win the game. Yes. Which is incredible. It is. And that's like a team effort. And I think, you know, that's not just the, the players. It's the crowd, how they supported it and they boosted because we were down mm. and we missed some penalties that game. And um, so it, it was a team effort from everyone, from from the players to, to, to the fans. And yeah. Mm. Did you feel that you got the support from the supporters oh, as well? 100%. Oh, yeah. 100%. I think from the minute it happened to, you know, even today, for example, it's, um, I think um, it's, yeah, I, I don't think I, I expected what I've gotten in, in respect from, from the fans and from everyone. And I just can say thank you for, for, for the support. And mm. it, it helped me a lot. Mm. Did you talk uh, a lot to your, to your teammates during the time after to process everything? Or did you try to just be alone with it? Or no. Um, we're back to how you yeah. were trying to cope with it. But. No, it was um, it was a lot of team talk, definitely. When, mm. but it's come to show that I'm a very sensitive person, so I I broke down a lot. Um, so it wasn't very easy for me to express at that time no. how I felt and um, where other people are, are different, and they they it's easier for them to express how they felt and stuff like that. So it was good to hear, and there was a lot of support among the players at Kaberg. Mm. But uh, at that time, I was, I would, me personally, I was very shut down and um, just hearing and taking in information kind of thing. Mm. So that was just me person, my personality. Yeah. And after the Gothenburg game, when the season just continued, mm. um, uh, how, how was that just trying to continue the season? Yeah, I guess it was like, yeah, you just roll with the punches. But, mm. you know, time does heal, you know, things. And it wasn't. I still couldn't understand how, and um, I couldn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? But it's more, um, I just, yeah, you just roll with it. And I, I, that's all I can say is yeah. that you just end up, you're in a, in a zone where- You have to handle it. You, you yeah. have to, and there is no other way of looking at it. And at the time I, you know, I, I still loved playing football. I mm -hmm. still loved it. And I still, um, so I tried to, to balance it out. and. Obviously, it was hard. It was hard for the first months. And, um, and you know, there was also some guilt into it, like, am I playing because of Ivan's death? And, you know, there was so many other, uh, there was a lot of, you know, I had guilt, you know, yeah. kind of like, oh, but... Because you were taking his spot or... It taking his spot, it was more like um, I had to prove myself that, okay. you know, I am a number one. I, I have to show that. And there was, you know, there was a competition view of things of as a footballer and also, like, you know, it's, uh, you know, Ivan should be here right now. Mm. So it was, it was hard to balance it. Yeah, because suddenly you were number one. Exactly. And, um, you know, as a number one, you have different kind of pressures. And yes, whatever happened, happened. Mm. But, you know, one month, two months down the line, fans and everyone is expecting results. Mm. So it's, it, it was a hard uh, balancing act. So um, that was just tough. And yeah, I just... Did you feel that the, the other players had the same kind of struggles as, as you had, or how did the the 
this affect the team during the, the season after? I, I realize obviously the game against Gothenburg, but how, how long would you yeah. say that it affected the, oh, I, the team's performance? It's a good question. I, I, I think it's more they had a different um, uh, sadness. They had more of, you know, a friend is gone, a colleague is gone, mm. where I had more of, you know, he was a very close friend of mine, and I've also a guy that I competed for the position. So it was different in that sense. But then it was just like, I guess, a family member or a friend gone. Mm. So I guess they, they dealt with it a little bit differently than I did. Yeah. Um, well, as a supporter, you, you know Ivan as a goalkeeper. You mm. know his abilities and you know how, how good he was. But it doesn't feel like everyone knows who he was. Right. Can you describe Ivan as, as a person? Um, uh, yeah, I, you know, off the pitch, for, for me anyways, he, he was a very honest person. But at the same time, honest in a way where he would say exactly what's on his mind, mm. but he would say it in a way where even if he was offending you, it wasn't, it was in a joking way. So you wouldn't take it offensively. So I don't know, I don't know how to say it exactly, but, um, he was a genuine, nice person. I think, um, he was honest and, um, I know I, he was a very good guy to have around. Definitely. And he, even though he was pessimistic about a lot of things, like, oh, we're going to lose today, five, nothing, four, nothing. He didn't mean it. He just meant it. He, and he would say it in a joking way. But at the same time, he, he came out and he produced all the time. But um, he was just a really, really good guy to have around. Okay. I, I can so tell you that. A, he was a joker. He so. was a very much of a big joker. Okay. And he also, you know, his English is not the best. So the words that he would use <laughs> is something that you wouldn't hear every day. So... You know, he, instead of saying, you know, this is chaotic, he'd say this is a circus okay. and with his accent as well. So, uh, you know, the food is really good. It's top. Okay. And the way, you, you know, stuff like that. So yeah. he, he had a funny, funny way of saying things. So yeah. he was generally a nice person. So this was at Kolbari. Was he the same in the dressing room when it was game time? Or uh, how no, would you no, describe game. him like in, in the dressing room? Uh, no, he would be pretty serious yeah. when it came to, to, to game day. In the change room, he'd always drink Red Bull. Okay, that's his thing. His before, just before the game. Before the game, he'd okay. chug a Red Bull, get okay. his <laughs> get his eagle wings, and fly. <laughs> okay, so we're doing a little commercial to Red Bull, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so he would always drink his Red Bull, and um, he'd be calm. Did he say so, why? Was it just to be? I guess it was maybe it was a, maybe yeah maybe it worked for him for a game, and mm. it was like a slap in the face, and let's go. Mm. He needed that little sugar rush, maybe I'm not sure, but. Um, no, he, he was calm. He, you could still joke with him, mm. but he was in a little bit more serious matter game day. Mm. Um, but um, no, he, you know, forget game day. He, he loved food. And uh, that's one thing we had in common. We'd mm. go out a lot to eat restaurants and stuff, and he can eat like I've never seen before. And he doesn't put on any kilos, so it was, it was pretty impressive. Yeah. Did, how much did you learn from him? I'm thinking both in life, but also as a, as a goalkeeper. Um, yeah, he, he, he mentioned some stuff that, you know, that he felt that could help me, Okay. you know, the way I dove or, you know, uh, he, cause he was very, like I said, explosive and acrobatic mm. and, you know, he gave you his tips and, um, uh, he was easy. He was easy. And I think, and that's where I think we had that good relationship where if I got that from possibly someone else, I could take that offensive and mm. who are you to tell me I'm a professional and probably that, but it wasn't that way at all. It was more. You can generally feel that he's trying to help me. Mm. So, yeah, help he, you and criticize you in a funny way. In, in a funny way, yeah. in a funny way, you know. So, um, no, uh, he was he was good mm. in that way. We had, we had a good relationship that way. Yeah. So when you think back at at Ivan, is that the way you remember him, or what it was the first thing that comes to mind? Oh, just the way he laughed, and um, I don't really think of him much on the pitch. When I think of him, if mm. you say Ivan Tudin, I think of the times that we spent together. You know. Um, my, you know, my best memories of with Ivan were when we went to Portland or to uh, Ventura in LA. We went with the team for preseason. Mm. We we're roommates, and again, that's rare too. Goalkeepers being roommates. Is that rare? That's okay. rare. Okay. That's doesn't really happen. No. Because the competition, or I just yeah, I just think um, yeah, there's just too much tension a little bit, you know, between them. Yep. As much as your friends, you know, you're competing. Mm. Where, um, I don't know. We, Okay, maybe he, he maybe he didn't feel threatened by me, but that's fine. But um, no, but we had that good connection, and uh, so yeah. I, when I think of Ivan, I just think of the times that I spent with him there, and yeah, he was 
yeah, we had, we had some good times together. Definitely had some good times together. Mm. Um, you mentioned it a bit earlier, but have the passing of Ivan affected you, like the, the way you think of life and the way you see death? Oh, definitely. I, um, yeah, especially right after. Obviously, when time goes by, you kind of mm. forget a little bit. But um, me being brought up, you know, I love my parents to death. and We speak every day. Mm. But we're not a family where we say I love you when we hang up the phone um, to my brother either. You know, again, I speak to him daily. Mm. And we're not like, okay, I love you, bye. It was, it was nothing like that. So after the, 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 the passing of Ivan, you know, I kind of like really considered like, you know, I might not see this person again. I might not interact with him again. So I say how I feel now. That's one thing I've learned that, you know, just express, even though it sounds weird to me, I, it doesn't come natural to me. Mm. But I tell people I love them, and I tell them that well, whatever I, comes in my mind at that time. So, yeah, that's what I could probably say, how I, it, it changed me mm. after. So Sounds like he meant a lot to you during the time and still means a lot he to does, you. He does, he does. And, um, yeah, I, like we said before, I, you know, we, I think about him quite a lot, and I think about Senka and the kids, and mm. so, yeah. yeah. We have a, a question from uh, Oliver here. Uh, what is your best memory uh, with or of Ivan Turina? Um, probably the best, which yeah, it could sound stupid, but we were in Portland and there's a famous um, donut shop. Okay. Okay. And like I told you, Ivan, we went there one time and we tried the donuts and he went crazy about them. And these line, uh, we're talking about a donut shop the size of, you know, a closet, but it was chaos and the lineup were. 20, uh, 25 minutes outside waiting for a donut. Ridiculous. So anyways, Ivan would go there every day and buy boxes. <laughs> okay. Okay, and he'd bring it to the room. And there was, a, in the store, it was like, if you eat this donut in three minutes, you get it for free. Okay. So we, we'd have challenges every night trying to beat that record of three minutes and him videotaping and laughing like a hyena, <laughs> trying to see me eat it and stuff in my face. But yeah, so, <laughs> so that would probably be my, <laughs> the funnest memory I've had with you. <laughs> so... So did he, did he love sweets? Oh, he, he loved everything. He ate everything. Okay. And he didn't gain a thing. I would be gaining. How is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. He's superhuman, that man. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, he ate a lot. He loved food. He loved crepes. He loved... He was, a, he was an animal. Yeah. And he didn't gain a thing. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, it was uh, nice to talk to you, Kenny, about uh, Ivan. And um, we'll talk more about him uh, during the years to come. Yes. And we're going to talk more about him uh, in a while as well. We're going to have a short break and I'm going to switch the language. Yes. So uh, när, vi, när vi kommer tillbaka så uh, har vi med oss Johan Westin som är försäljningschef för AIK och pratar lite om Ivan Trina och då också det faktum att biljettintäkterna, en del av biljettintäkterna går då till Hjärtlungfonden. Så mer om det alldeles strax. Ett av Nordens största fotbollslag. En av världens största appar. Båda från Stockholm. Båda med större ambitioner. Från Stockholm till världen.
Ja, då är vi tillbaka i studion och då har vi fått med oss Johan Westin som är försäljningschef och fotboll. Välkommen in i studion. Tack så jättemycket. Du, fina bilder mm. här som vi ser. Vi såg den här räddningen mot Djurgården som är helt osannolik. Mm. Vi såg Tifot mot Blåvitt. Mm. Vad, 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 vad tänker du när du ser bilderna här på, på Ivan? Det är väldigt mycket känslor förstås. Även när man hör Stan prata här. Mm. Så förutom mest uppenbara så känner jag en stor stolthet. Mm. Jag känner stolthet över hur AIK-familjen hanterade det. Hela fotbollsfamiljen egentligen och andra delar av samhället också klev in i det här. Och stolthet också hur, hur AIK-familjen har fortsatt att hantera det mm. under tio års tid. Mm. Jag vill sticka ut taken och säga att det är unikt för AIK att hantera en sån här sak så värdigt som man gjort. Ja, precis. För det var som pratade om, Kenny. Det är inte lätt att hantera någonting sånt här som man i stort sett omedelbart förbereder sig på. Mm. Så det får man ju säga att det, det, det har AIK skött på ett liksom bra sätt. Ja, AIK och med AIK är det ju inte liksom bara själva fotbollsklubben utan Nej. alla runt omkring ja. med supportrar. Det har varit äh, otroligt, äh, otroligt många minnen som kopplar till Ivan när han levde men även, äh, även efter. Mm. Har du något som sticker ut? Så där, något minne med Ivan som du... Ja, men, lite kul faktiskt. Jag trodde jag var unik som jag var i Portland. Eh, och, eh, ja, och, eh, för då jobbade jag för svenska fans och intervjuade spelare. Okay. Och så vågade jag aldrig intervjua Ivan, för jag såg alltid bara Ivan på, på plan ja. eh, innan, innan Portland. Eh, och, och där var han inte den här skojfriska killen som, som Stan berättade om. Så jag tror att han, han är ett monster, så jag mm. vågade aldrig intervjua honom. Jag valde eh, om Sam, Sam Lundholm istället. Ja. <laughs> lite snällare. Ja, men lite snällare. Ja. Vi var i samma ålder nästan ungefär också. Mm. Eh, men så... Eh, men så kommer jag att jag mötte Ivan Torina faktiskt på väg. För då hade jag och min kollega då varit på det där donutcellet. Okay. Så, så mötte vi honom på väg. Jag trodde det var ett unikt tillfälle då jag mötte honom. Aha. Men nu får jag höra att han var där varje dag. <laughs> så han älskade det där. Ja, de där ja. Men då, då, såg jag ju, då såg jag ju den riktiga Ivan. Ja. Ehm, Precis. Det var ju inget monster. Han var inte skräcken jag. Nej. Utan, vem är inte glad när man går med... Om man hade två lådor donuts till och med. Ja. Ehm, men... Så äh, det, jag kan ju bara bekräfta den bilden som alla berättar om att mm. det, det verkar ha varit en väldigt fin människa utanför planen. Ja, jag träffade honom bara kort när jag var, köpte kläder en gång och kände att jag måste ta en bild med Ivan. Mm. Eh, för det var, eh, kändes mäktigt och han var ju väldigt, som du var inne på, kändes lite mm. läskigt nästan. Mm. Eh, men var ju otroligt varm och mm. snäll och frågade eftersom jag är lite längre än vad ja, han var sjuk, sjuk nog ja. så tyckte han att det var lite... Roligt att fråga om jag spelar basket och så ja, att jag var en, en jätte precis som honom. Så vi bondade ja. lite. Ja, ja. ja, Ivan. Men du, Johan, en, en del av biljettintäkterna från AIK, matchen mellan AIK och Sirius på lördag då, kommer mm. att skänkas till Hjärtlungfonden. Ja. Kan du berätta lite mer om det här? Mm. Ja, men det är den stora insamlingsmatchen för, för Hjärtlungfonden som är vår välgörenhetspartner. Eh, och eh, det är väl, det är en väldigt naturlig välgörenhetspartner för oss med tanke på det som drabbade Ivan och, och vi förlorade ju tyvärr ytterligare en kollega i år i Hjärtstopp också. Mm. Eh, och som du säger, 10 kronor för varje sål matchbiljett kommer gå till Hjärtlungfonden. Eh, och sen så kommer vi göra lite andra aktiviteter runt omkring där också som, som kommer eh, hamna in i deras viktiga arbete. Och, de arbetar ju dels med stämmer och trycker frustration över att man vet inte varför. Ja, men kanske om man forskar mer så mm. kan man se riskfaktorer tidigt, så det, ja, men den proaktiva delen. Men sen också faktiskt när det väl tyvärr sker då, då, så sker alldeles för ofta och alldeles för få överlever att det mm. finns hjärtstartare. Ja. Och där har vi, det finns en, det finns en länk, vi, vi kommer länka till den på vår hemsida i samband med det här, där man faktiskt kan gå in och kolla så här, i mitt grannskap hjärtsäkrat. Om hjärtsäkrat betyder det att det finns en hjärtstartare i närheten. Mm. Många gånger gör det inte det. Eh, och, och några gånger när det gör det så är den inlåst för att den är en, på något kontor eller en fritidsgård. Eller någonting. Mm. Så de har en kampanj där de vill hjärtsäkra eh, grannskap. Alltså se till okay. att man som grannskap samlar in pengar själv och, och köper en hjärtstartare. Uh-huh. När AIK klev in i det här, det vi har velat lyfta fram det är att alla områden har ju inte samma möjligheter att betala för de här startarna. Nej. Så vi vill via en kampanj säkerställa att även socioekonomiskt utsatta områden också blir hjärtsäkra helt enkelt. Okay. Så det kommer vara, vara lite aktiviteter kring det. Mm. Om jag skulle berätta om alla aktiviteter skulle vi behöva förlänga det här programmet. Mm. Men det jag vill nämna det är att vi kommer ha Ivan-minuten. 
Ja, precis. Du får berätta mer om det. Eh, Iva minuten, då syftar jag inte på den här 27 minuten. Eh, utan det är en minut som kommer ske innan matchen. Och det ska vara den mest konstruktiva tysta minuten som någonsin genomförts. Och det innebär att man... Det låter väldigt mycket AIK. Ja, det låter väldigt mycket AIK. Ja. Men vi, vi ska ju vara framåt lutar och sticka ut hakan och mm. även i det här fallet. Och, och det leder ofta till väldigt bra grejer och det gör det här också. Vi, vi ska vara tyst, mm. <laughs> förstås. Mm. Men vi ska också se till att ta upp våra telefoner och under den minuten swisha till Hjärt mm. Så att vi får en tydlig effekt av det. Mm. Och det där kommer att upprepas sen även den 2 maj, 27 minuter över 10. Mm. Och då, kommer, då har vi fått loss några reklamskyltar och ja men, LED-skyltar runt om i Stockholm. Där vi kommer att uppmärksamma detta och liksom bjuda in stora delar av samhället att också vara en del av i minuten. Då. Just det. Och 2 maj är då för att det var då han gick bort och 10-27 är... För det var 10 år sedan ja. och så ja, hans, hans tröjnummer 27. Mm. Just det. Och de här donerade pengarna alltså, de kommer alltså att användas då till bland annat då att hjärtsäkra socioekonomiskt utsatta områden? Ja, precis. Att de, går ju, de är inte öronmärkta just Nej. på det sättet. Den aktiviteten, vi kommer att ha lite andra aktiviteter som går direkt in i det. Aha. Men annars så är det ju pengar rakt in i, in i deras forskning som är, som är super, superviktig. Mm. Ja, fint och väldigt eh, viktigt arbete givetvis. Och jag tänkte, vi ska prata lite kort om din roll som försäljningschef också, mm. Johan. För historiskt sett så gjorde AIK ett ett väldigt bra år 2022 eh, om man tittar på hur mycket intäkter som vi fick från Partners. Mm. Eh, hur ser det ut eh, det här året än så länge 2023? Jättebra. Eh, jag vågar nog lova att vi slår rekord i år också. Mm. Eh, och det är mycket glädjande. Det fanns en viss oro. Vi har ju världsläget av inflation. Eh, så då är man alltid orolig att hur högt prioriterar våra kunder AIK. Mm. Men glädje är nog konstaterat att de prioriterar AIK väldigt högt. Mm. Men det är en takt vi ska fortsätta med. Jag ser fortfarande en stor potential. Jag ser framför att vi kommer att bli enormt besviken om vi inte slår rekord även nästa år. Men det viktiga för oss också det är att vi skulle kunna öka intäkterna med 20 procent över en natt. Mm. Men vi, vi har ju också ett, ett kompass i oss, en slags moraliskt eller svartgult kompass, sentimentalt kompass som säger att vi värnar om vår direkt till exempel. Mm. Vi, vi sticker ut lite i allsvenska med oss så. Få sponsorer på både shorts och tröja. Vi har även ett arbete just nu som pågår med de svartgula skyltarna mm. framför norra och halva östra. Det är några som har, som har noterat det och ja. som sprids lite. Ja. ja, men det är bra för det är vårt löfte också till de här sponsorerna att det, det kommer noteras och ja. de kommer älskas extra. Mm. För det tycker jag är balt. Jag, jag tycker mig se en sån medvetenhet bland supporterna på Twitter. Mm. Att man är duktigare på att hälsa sponsorer välkomna. Det är super, super viktigt. Så när vi får in dem, skriv på Twitter, skriv på, på deras Instagram. Mm. Um, men som sagt, vi, vi, så vi skulle ju kunna öka eh, ännu mer, men det skulle vi förlora på sikt. Eh, för vi värnar ju om AIKs, AIKs varumärke och på lång sikt är det faktiskt det vi säljer. Mm. Eh, så om vi ökar 20 procent på ett år så skulle vi successivt eh, faktiskt sjunka. Eh, så, eh, men jag ser fram emot att eh, det finns ändå en potential eh, som vi ska få in de närmaste åren. Mm. Hur eh, skulle du ytterligare beskriva AIKs attraktionskraft idag? Det, det finns mätningar på det som säger att AIK har det starkaste idrottsvarumärket. Mm. Det är balt. Mm. Eh, och det förenklar ja, det. ju vårt arbete. Eh, och det är faktiskt så att vi till och med bråkar om toppplaceringar i starkast varumärke i Sverige. Och då tar vi in gäster som Ikea och Volvo och Ica. Eh, men där har vi senaste året pratat, pratat mycket med Tobbe Larsson som är kommunikationschef. Om mm. så här, ja, men vad är ett... Var ett starkt varumärke och var ett bra varumärke. Man vill ju också vara det bästa varumärket. Och vill man associeras med det starkaste eller det bästa varumärket. Mm. Och exakt hur man mäter det bästa, det är lite knepigare. Mm. Men det vi vet hur, hur vi kan påverka det. Vi kan inte flita oss på det vi gör på plan. Då kommer vi inte alltid vara det bästa om vi bara utgår från det. Utan det är allting vi gör runt omkring. Mm. Så därför är det viktigt att vi fortsätter med vårt enorma samhällsengagemang. Med kvällsfotboll och alla möjliga bitar. Men även att vi arbetar hårt med våra välgörenhetspartners också. Mm. Ehm, avslutningsvis då Johan. Om man ehm, sitter hemma som företagare. Om stor eller liten. Mm. Ehm, och funderar på att investera i AIK. Hur mm. går man tillväga då? Då kontaktar man gärna mig. Ehm, och då är det johan.vestin. Mm. Det finns information på vår hemsida också. Att hitta under en företagsflik där. 
Eh, vi har fortfarande, det som fördel med vår produkt, den, den, det är klart att den utgår lite från säsongen men den lever året runt, mm. dygnet runt. Eh, vi, vi har ju reklam kopplat till ditt fantastiska eh, program eh, till exempel och mm. ni sänder ju året runt. Eh, så, så det är bara att av sig. Eh, som sagt, vill man förknippas med Sveriges starkaste idrottsvarumärke så står dörren öppen. Mm. Innan vi avslutar eh, Studio AIK Live för idag då, så tänkte jag också nämna, du var inne på Ivan Turna eh, minuten och så har det ju varit minut 27 också som Just har varit tant minut mm. när man har hyllat honom mm. på, på läktaren. Och mm. inför här året så gick ju supportergrupperna tillsammans med AIK eh, ut och eh, sa då att eh, efter matchen mot Sirius på lördag så ger vi ramsade den 27 minuten ro att vila och plocka sen fram den en gång per år alltid i samband med dödsdagen för att minnas vår kroatiska gigant lite extra. Mm. Där skriver några stå på, på Instagram. Det är vår tro att detta kommer upprätthålla minnet av Ivan på bästa vis och vi tackar ödmjukast alla aik som tillsammans med oss hedrat Ivan genom åren. Ivan Turina, alltid närvarande. Mm. Så det blir sista gången för år då, helt mm. enkelt mm. på Friends på lördag som eh, vi sjunger Ivan Trina Ramsan i minut 27. Men sen mm. så kommer ju hedrandet fortsätta, eh, eller hyllingarna kommer fortsätta varje, varje år mm. helt enkelt. Jag tycker det är ett, ett fint beslut. Mm. Det blir värdigt. Det, det skulle inte bli värdigt om den där eh, minuten sjöngs av lite färre människor varje Nej. match varje år. Så det blir ett värdigt avslut. Så jag rekommenderar alla att faktiskt köpa biljetter. Det finns många anledningar. Bara att se AIK är alltid fantastiskt kul. Nu går mm. även pengar till Hjärtlungfonden och det är sista gången vi, vi, vi hedrar Ivan på, på, på det sättet. Mm. Så ja, köp biljett. Verkligen. Så hoppas vi att vi hedrar Ivan genom att spela in tre poäng också. Mot, ja, absolut. Mot Sirius. Det är väl lägligt. Det är faktiskt dags. Men ja, precis. Tack Johan. Tack. Och som du sa, vi hoppas att så många som möjligt tar sig till Friends på lördag 15.00 mot Sirius för att hedra Ivan Turina en 